Hi, this video is all about some of the minerals that we're likely to come across in metamorphic rocks. It's a combination of minerals that are unique and characteristic of metamorphic rocks and some others that we find in uh, other rock types but uh, are a, a good indicator that metamorphism may well have occurred. Let's have a look at a few. We know that different minerals grow at different uh, metamorphic temperatures. They give us a good indication of metamorphic grade. This graph nicely illustrates some of these differences. So for example, a metamorphic rock that we find chlorite in will be a much lower grade than one, say, we find uh, storolite in, which again will be lower grade than one we find pyroxene or orgite. How do we recognize these minerals? Though? Let's start with chlorite. Chlorite is a very distinctive, characteristic, low-grade metamorphic mineral. We find it uh, in low-grade metamorphic rocks. Um, for example, we can see bottom right here uh, in slate. Uh, here it's grown as uh, some spots in a slate, so a slate that's been subject to uh, high enough temperatures that we start to get some of this solid state recrystallization. Um, it's quite a distinctive, very pale green colour, although we tend to see it just as a, as a colouring in a rock rather than sort of individual recognisable crystals. Um, for that, to see a crystal, you need to look at perhaps a thin section, uh, like we can see uh, on the top left there. Mica is a mineral we can find in all sorts of different types of rocks. Um, we see uh, quite a distinctive sort of platy shape, um, I, both in the um, hand specimen, bottom right, the, the flaky minerals that are very characteristically mica, uh, and also in the thin sections there where you can see these uh, very flat, uh, often multicolored, but um, so quite platy, flaky uh, minerals um, uh, in this rock. Uh, this is a schist, really defined by these foliations of mica, uh, mixed in there with some, uh, some quartz. Garnet is a, another of these very distinctive, characteristically metamorphic minerals. It's I think very identifiable, very recognisable, both in hand specimen there as there's other dark reddy brown uh, porphyroblasts in a garnet mica schist, although you can find it in other uh, types of metamorphic rock as well. I've seen it in Hornfels, for example. But in thin section, it's very, very distinctive indeed. Uh, it's black, it uh, doesn't allow light, light through it. Um, and you can often see, as in this example, the nice euhedral uh, straight edge crystal shape, uh, creating sort of a, a hexagonal um, shape in, uh, in cross section. It's very distinctive stuff and absolutely characteristic of metamorphic rocks. Now pyroxene and feldspar aren't characteristic of uh, metamorphic rocks. They're the type of minerals we can find, uh, for example, in igneous rocks. In fact, the mineralogy of this rock, this is a, a sample of gneiss, uh, is very similar to, um, say, a granite. We see quartz, we see uh, the pyroxene, we see um, plagioclase, orthoclase, feldspars in there. As Just in terms of their mineralogy, they're not distinctively metamorphic. However, when they're arranged, as we can see here, uh, in this banded form, then we know it must be metamorphic. We know there must be uh, pressure acting on these rocks. A mineral that isn't 
um, found elsewhere. This is a characteristically metamorphic mineral. Uh, it's andalusite or chiastolite. We, we treat the two as, um, as effectively the same thing. It's a contact metamorphic mineral. We find it often in, uh, in mud rocks that have been, been heated and is extremely distinctive still. Um, you can see from the hand specimen, the needle shape uh, or acicula form of these minerals and also the very, very distinctive square cross section, which you can also see uh, in the thin section on the top left. That square cross section often has uh, either a black square in the middle of it, which again you can see in both views, or even, uh, which you can see on the thin section, uh, this sort of cross shape pattern uh, running across from the corner to corner of the square. It really can't be confused with anything else. And when you find it, you know that rock has been metamorphosed, probably by contact metamorphism. Calcite is a mineral, again, we can find uh, in other rocks. We, it's a common sedimentary mineral. The presence of calcite alone doesn't tell us we have a metamorphic rock. However, if we see this sugary texture, um, like we can see in the hand specimen on the bottom right, it does sort of suggest we have uh, metamorphism. And in particular, if we look at the uh, thin section, um, which shows predominantly calcite, this sort of pale pastel-y colour um, mineral, we see a lot of distinctive 120 degree angles between the calcite crystals, where the, the calcite has, has been fused together. That is characteristically metamorphic. So it, it's a subtle sign of metamorphism, but a recognisable one nonetheless. So these metamorphic minerals we've been looking at give us a good indication, firstly, that metamorphism has occurred, and secondly, an indication of the degree or the grade of metamorphism that a rock's been subject to. It's important then we recognise these minerals and can identify these minerals for what they are and their significance. Don't forget to come up with your interesting question and bring it to class. I'll see you then.